Hi, my name is Don Latarski, and thanks for joining me for lesson number nine of Guitar Theory Illustrated. Since we've completed our examination of all the intervals that we're going to need to build chord scales and arpeggios, we're going to actually launch now into a new area, which is how to use those shapes to build chords. And we're going to start today with major chords. Each chord has a formula. The formula represents the actual interval structure that's in the chord. That formula is represented by a series of numbers. Now it takes three different pitches to make the simplest of all chords, which are triads. We're going to limit ourselves today to just major chords. We're going to start with the triad and see what happens when we add extra pitches to it and see how the name changes and how the sound changes without losing the essence of the major sound. Here are all the notes in the major scale. I've gone all the way to the 13th because that's the highest number you'll ever find in a chord. C13, A13. Now, chords in Western music are built by stacking intervals of a third, one on top of another. So the formula for the major triad is going to be 1, 3, and 5 from whatever root note you choose to work from. Well, I've got a C major chord up here on the board. Let's take a look at it. It's very simple, right? 1, 3, 5. Here it is. That's the very simple version of C major. Now, it doesn't sound that great by itself because we actually have three other strings that could potentially be doing something. So let's start by making this chord a little bit fuller. The simplest way to do that is just to go back to your octave shapes and see if you can duplicate one or more of the notes in the chord. The third can be duplicated over here on string one. The root note is easily duplicated on string two. That's the standard way of playing a C chord in first position. It is possible to actually put a note on string six as well. We could put this note, doubling the thirds. Actually, now we're tripling the thirds. We have three in there, so let's hear what that sounds like. still a C chord, but the bass note is no longer the root note of the chord. I want to be real clear about distinguishing between the bass note of a chord and the root note. The root note is the note after which the chord is named. This is a very important note, right? Because when we move this chord form around on the fingerboard, we need to know where the root note sits on the fingerboard in order to line it up correctly on the fingerboard to play the chord we want. This is, though, the actual bass note in this chord, and we see that it's the third of the chord. When you put a bass note in a chord that is not the root, the chord is said to be in inversion. When the third is in the bass, it's called first inversion. If we were to double the fifth in this chord and put the fifth in the bass, that would be called second inversion. Let's hear what that sounds like. It still sounds good. It changes a little bit the sound and the emotional impact of that chord. Inversions do that. Let's put the formula for this major triad up here, it's always the same, irregardless of key. The major triad is always one, three, and five. When you see that chord in tablature or a piece of music, it's represented just by a musical letter name. So if we're playing a C chord or someone asks you to play a C chord, or if you see this in a, in a piece of music, you're just gonna, you're gonna see that just a letter name. 
Now, if that major triad is built upon a note that's not just a natural tone, which would be A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, those are the natural notes, but if it's built on either a flat tone or a sharp tone, you'll just see that letter name instead. So if we wanted to make an A flat major, or you wanted to tell someone to play an A flat major in a piece of music or a song that you've written, you just write down A flat. You don't have to say M, A, J, or anything like that after it. Let's take a look and see how these major triads progress through the caged system. This is the C form. I'm going to put up the next form now, which would be the A form. Here's the octave shape for the A form. I didn't build it because I want you to see me build it because this is the kind of stuff you need to be able to do on your own. Now, when you're building any chord, you don't have to follow the strict ordering of the formula. We know the formula for the major chord is 1, 3, and 5. We're not often going to play a chord with that voicing. Voicing refers to the ordering of the notes in the chord from the lowest to the highest. So, let's see what we can do up here. Here's a real standard voicing for a major triad using the A form. We can easily play an interval of a fifth. We can double the root. That's nice. Sounds good. Easy to play. And notice there's an interval of a major third from this note to here. You could call it a major tenth from here, clear over to there. That's a real standard chord to play. Many people will use a bar to play that, like this. Although you can play it with just one finger holding down each string. Now, some of you may actually be adding an additional fifth. Very easy to do. It's not so easy to play. It's easy to add it. Um, my finger does not bend up sharply at this first joint. If yours does, you can probably play this chord form. We can double the fifth over there as well. And so I don't know if I can do all this. I'll try. I didn't fill in all the other note possibilities in the G form. I wanted you to see how it's done. This doesn't sound all that great by itself. Very bassy. I'm just on the, you know, strings four, five, and six. But again, through octave additions, through doublings or possibly even triplings, we can expand this chord form to sound a lot better. So let's do it. Let's put the octave in first. That helps. There's a major third right across from that. That's a pretty good sound. We can double the root note again on string one, making it a little bit more difficult to play. Now, do we need that note? Not really. We can leave it off completely. You can play any combination of one, three, or five and still have a major triad. Let's go to the next position. Here's the octave shape for the E form. This is one of the most common forms on the guitar. We're at the eighth fret here with our root note. That's a C note. And let's start filling in and make a good sounding movable chord, major chord. The five sets nicely there. The three is here. We can double the five once again and that's a real nice standard major triad movable. We have one more possibility for the major triad, and that would be in the D form. I'm kind of running out of fingerboard here, so I can't actually put that one up here. I'm going to leave it up to you guys to go ahead and put that one on the fingerboard. We expand major chords by adding thirds on top of the thirds that are already there. So we've got a one, three, five for the major triad. The next interval up from that would be the seventh. One, three, five, seven, 
actually equals a major seventh chord. Now, when you have a major seventh chord, you have to indicate that the quality of the chord is in fact major and that the seventh is in it. In music, that would be indicated like this. C major seven. Actually, there are several other ways you can represent this chord as well. With a large M, which I don't like. It's too easy to confuse it with a minor chord. With a triangle, or the delta symbol, they use that in jazz quite a bit. Or just with a C and a European style seven. Also, you could have C M A J seven. In part two of spelling major chords, we're going to see what happens when we add more notes to the basic seventh chord. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you real soon.